Folks, it's Fernando doing a quick video for more survivalists. First of all, allow me to apologize for not keeping up with the videos as I usually do, but I've been pretty busy lately, so that's the reason why. Today is Father's Day here in Spain, and I got three t-shirts. I thought it would be interesting to cover a little basics on, on survival-minded clothing, at least the way I perceive it in terms of modern survivalism. Uh, one of the aspects that I try to keep in mind is the gray man approach. The philosophy of the gray man approach is you basically want to go by as unnoticed as possible. Basically blending in, getting lost in the crowd, and for that you try to wear clothes that are not awfully visible, not any, you know, avoiding very bright colors, avoiding loud logos or anything that is noticeable. That may be including, in, in many cases as well, a camouflage type of clothing, which usually sticks out in the crowd because people usually don't wear that sort of thing. So with that in mind, um, the basics would be having colors such as these. Black, dark blue, gray, maybe a little bit darker gray, but gray all, all around is, is okay. So these are the ones that I have here. Th these are from Sada and they're okay, they're nice. The, the material though, this is cotton, all right? For the kind of climate that I have here in the Costa del Sol, south of Spain, which is basically warm year round. You can get away with that with, with cotton, that's, that's fine. Th this kind of weather, you know, where the priority is basically getting away from the sun because even in winter you have people on the beach here. So uh, cotton is okay. Now the thing is with cotton is that if it gets wet, really doesn't dry up fast enough, doesn't wick uh, humidity away from the body. So those would be the, um, the disadvantages in cotton. On the other hand, it's a cotton is not awfully expensive. It's actually the cheapest fabric you can have. It's also very comfortable and it keeps you fresh. So those are the good things that it has going for it. Merino wool is a great uh, fabric. And when I was in Ireland, it made more sense, especially because in Ireland, you're basically wet all the time. Or if you're not wet, you're moist or something along those lines because either there's a very high humidity or it's actually raining most of the time. So. And winters, yeah, it can get a little bit cold. You do have snow even, so um, those would be uh, things to keep in mind, especially from a, a survival perspective of thinking in the worst case scenario, which would be this. You don't have shelter, you're wet, you're cold. You have wet clothes on your back. That would be the bad situation to be in uh, from the clothing perspective. So what you want is clothes that either keep you warm, even when wet, like wool, or something that dries very fast. And for that, here is where I have, what is, as of right now, I guess, my favorite type of top. This is Under Armour. Let me change that so you can check it out. Heat Gear. I'm going to be leaving the link below, as always, in case you want to check it out. This is, so far, my, my favorite type of, of, of top, especially in this kind of weather. And yeah, even in Ireland, you know, it makes a lot of sense for the following reasons. It's a, it's a synthetic material, right? It's not as comfortable as cotton. I would put it in a midpoint between cotton and, mer and merino wool. Um, I guess it's almost as cotton, you know, closer to a very comfortable cotton level. Uh, but you know, it, you really get used to it fast, even if you you haven't worn it before. Um, it's uh, the, the fabric is very durable compared to cotton, compared to merino wool. It takes wear and tear much, much better than either of the two natural fabrics. So how durable it is, how fast it dries, and how cool it keeps you in very uh, warm climates, those are very good points it has going for it. So let's think about worst case scenario wearing this. If I'm, you know, even though I'm in a place that's pretty warm, Nearby, you have mountains, you even have skiing resource, uh, resource. so it's not uh, inconceivable that you may find yourself stuck in a colder place with something like this on your back and wet. Even in that case, worst case scenario, you, you take it off, you press it like that, you uh, roll it up, you slam it against a tree, the ground or rocks or whatever, and because of the wicking action, because it really retains practically no, no no water, it dries much faster than cotton and even dry, dries faster than merino wool. So if you find shelter, you can actually dry this pretty fast or even put it on your back again uh, if you have a, a heat source, a fire, and it's going to be drying surprisingly fast. At least that's been my experience with it. So it's a, it's a very good 
a jack of all trades, so let's put it some way, with a slight priority towards warmer climates. That's, I guess, why the heat gear thing going on. Guys, it's going to be all for now. Remember to subscribe. Thumbs up if you like the video. Take care. See you on our next video.